Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of the Closing Time Podcast, powered by Rocky Hill Accountants. I am Joe Aguirre. She is Sanam Salati. We thank you so much for joining us. If you are one of the 50 million people who still hasn't filed your taxes, you do have until May 17th. Um, go to RockyHillAccountants.com, though, and get it done. You're not going to do it yourself, clearly, at this point. You shouldn't. No, you. Sh- I don't know why you would anyway, but uh, it's clear that you haven't, and you're probably not going to call my man Glenn let him take care of you now so um um some really interesting news this week they did this huge survey you and I love real estate yeah that's, absolutely. that's a fair statement to make we love we that's love an it. understatement oh absolutely right it's a big part of our lives now I, I I just saw this recently it was a meme I don't know if it was true or not but it said 90 percent of America's millionaires made their fortunes in real estate yeah Again, I don't know if that's true. It sounds so, legit. Yeah. It certainly does. I knows what a good investment uh, real estate is. Home ownership has always been the American dream. We talk about building generational wealth. The best way to do it that's is to real estate. A million percent. Well, yeah. this new survey came out, uh, and America loves homes in a kind of a weird, unhealthy way is what we're finding Surety first conducted this interview, and they found that more than half of the people who were polled uh, spent between one and four hours looking up listings. That's a lot. Now, mind you, most of these people aren't actually in the market. They're just looking at listings. And it usually starts with, I look up my home value, then I see my boss's home value because I want to see what he's doing, and then... That's when Enemies you, and friends. Yeah. Oh, and that's where it goes. Then all of a sudden you're looking everything up and then you're finding houses. And 40% of these people uh, have between three and five Zillow alerts on that's houses. Crazy. Yeah. Again, yeah. you're not going to buy the house. What are you doing? Although they have shown studies, and I don't know the exact statistics like in the past, that if you start looking at Zillow, eventually you'll get sucked into it. And within two years, you'll end up buying something. Is that Eventually. right? Zillow must have it. They got they got the, the right configurations. Here's where things, I think, got kind of weird as I was reading more about this. Because, again, I mean, everybody likes real estate and of people course. love, look. you know, we've certainly seen through some of the lead generators where people just type in fake info because they just want to they want to be able to get close and not too close. But it seems now they don't care. Fifty eight percent of people in this survey. So nearly six in ten missed a deadline at work. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, that's why Zillow made it on Saturday Night Live. And they, <laughs> they had a really funny skit. And it was like home porn until like the guy picks up the phone to like call Zillow. And it's an agent from another company, very pushy, <laughs> and is like, let me, I'm here to help you. And the guy's like, oh, jolted from this like exciting like real estate porn online. And then he hangs up. And like, that's the reality. Like, uh, it's definitely a thing. 56% yeah. of people have canceled plans so they can look at listings that they're not going to buy. Yeah. I, I don't even know why you would do that. Like, if I'm not looking for a car, I'm not car shopping, like, online. Like, I don't know. Like, why do people do that? It's weird. Again, yeah. I guess people just really love homes. 41% of the people said that they spent so much time looking at listings that it's caused problems in their personal or their professional lives. That's crazy. The only good thing I can see is like being inspired with home decor, Mm -hmm. but then go out and buy a Joanna Gaines book and learn how to like design your house nicely. Yeah. I don't know. I love Joanna Gaines. I do too. She's Can I tell you? I've actually been to like a few homes over the past week where her book has been on their like coffee table and their homes have been decked up to the nines and not even like pouring in a lot of money into the decor, but just like beautifully designed. So she's got a new show. I don't know if you saw it and apparently does an entire episode about biscuits. Oh, I didn't know that. An entire episode start to finish just on biscuits. Interesting. Yeah. Joanna Gaines. Biscuits, that's what we're <laughs> now, uh, last week I bragged a little bit about something I talked about. Um, I think my best skill as a real estate agent, in addition to being super fun to work with, I love to negotiate. I'm really good at it. I generally can find a good first offer, and I can generally guess where the counter is going to be and where we're going to end up. And I know my clients really do appreciate that. Again, came across an article, and the first point they made was 
you need a plan when you go into a negotiation. And I thought, well, that's what I'm doing. I already kind of have it mapped out. And if it goes off the rails, obviously we're going to talk about it. But it's important, right, when you start off and you and you reach the other agent, it, you can't just go in there. can't be crap shoot no. time. You know, once in a blue moon, we'll get, like, an offer from a realtor with zero flexibility. And it just leaves such a nasty taste in everybody's mouth that you're like, I don't even want to work with you. Like, the client feels like they don't even want to work with you. So, yeah, no, there always has to be a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. And like we've talked about in this market, there's not a lot of yeah. There's just not a lot of flexibility. Right here, now, right? the plan is to offer best yeah. and highest right off the bat, and then still cross your fingers and pray that something good happens. Yeah. Uh, because uh, was it you that told me that offer thirty thousand over asking? One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty thousand over asking. Oh, so do you know my new trick? No. Two deals this week. What I did was when we submitted the offer, we said that obviously inspections are for informational purposes only. But if my buyer walks away because of an unsatisfactory inspection, they're gifting the seller the escrow deposit. Like no qualms about it. And that's actually helped. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Something new. Yeah. And, and we won goodness. an offer that we were not the highest. We were not the highest number at, but we had that upper slate. Well, see, and that's important too, I think, yeah. for people to understand that, um, you know, generally speaking, you, I think most people assume, right? Whoever offers the most wins. Um, and just like in sports free agency, it's not always the team that offers the most, but the one that has the best overall package. Yeah. Right. If I can close in 30 days, um, and it's my offers 2000 less and you're trying to close in 90. Yeah. No, all day, it would be worth it. Um, stat uh, or, or, or point number two in the negotiation is to listen, hear what they're saying and then compromise. I think we're at a point in this country where that <laughs> word is a dirty word. Compromise. compromise. No, I want what I want. And I'm getting it doesn't work that way no and you know what as realtors like there has to be give and take like i feel good when there's a little bit of, bit of give and take because i don't want one person feeling like they're being ripped off like that's just such a bad feeling and it just sets the whole tone to be like again not the best experience you want everybody to feel like they walked away with something so and then the third thing and i think this was the most obvious is expect challenges <laughs> so here's three in particular. Number one, real estate negotiations are fast. Right now they are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, agent to agent, uh, you know, when you hand things over to the attorneys, they've got an eternity of time to close to work things out and get people to sign stuff. We're working in the heat of the moment and right could be another offer in. And so we have to, which again, I think is why it's super important that before you make the offer, before you've even seen the house, this is why you want to have a sit down with your client. Yes. Yeah. I want to know where you're at. I want to know that you understand, especially in this market, yeah. that if you want this house and you want to like mess around a little bit, figuring out what the offer is going to be, probably going to lose it before you get home. Yeah. And not only that, like sometimes there's homes that have actually been on the market for a few weeks. And so then the buyer feels like, oh, well, I have all this time because it's been on the market for a few weeks. But that's not necessarily the case. And it doesn't mean we have time to dilly dally. Like I always, I've always been a big like believer in the fact that time kills deals. So you strike while the iron is hot. You put it together as quickly as possible. You fall in love with the house, do what you need to do to make it yours. You don't need to like sleep on it necessarily. Right. Because you may not sleep in it. But again, that's, that's why I say I really got to, you got to talk to your clients. You got to yeah. make sure that you're on the, you're in this, of the same mindset. And that, you know, if you're in a home, and they really like the home, you should probably already be having a conversation about, all right, listen, when you get home, this is what's happening. I'm going to start drawing up the paperwork then. So you guys need to talk this out and get on the same page. And you don't have that conversation in the home. Correct. <laughs> yes. I've had to cut that one off a few times. No. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, there's fewer opportunities uh, in a real estate negotiation because there's only so many things that you can really, although we're starting to see more of them there's now, a lot more obviously, these days. Sure. Um, but typically speaking, these negotiations are it's it's the date, it's the price, it's the escrow. Yeah. And so there's not a ton. I mean, obviously, home inspections and 
uh, their importance. So again, there's not a ton of stuff to negotiate. You got to know what you're going in with. Uh, and the other thing I find, especially when doing a home inspection is right. I always tell my clients, think about what you're paying mm -hmm. first and foremost, like, right. If we put a pretty good offer in and they accept it and we're doing the home inspection and there's a lot of dings and bumps and things, you might have to suck some of that up. Well, I mean, it's part of home ownership. There's no perfect home, right? You know, before this, we would always just talk about, you know, only talking about structural issues, mechanical, mm -hmm. plumbing, electrical, like health and safety items. But outside of that, like every home is going to have a list of issues and you just have to be prepared to take them on. You're joining the, the home ownership club. So yeah, it's yeah. also important, I, I would say, too, to get a good home inspector. Absolutely. The kind of home inspector who doesn't just tell you um the obvious like the this is broken it needs to be fixed like yeah i can i can see that i like the home inspectors that are like your boiler's gonna go in about 10 years you're gonna probably want to start like a rainy day fund and throw some money in there like that's the kind of stuff i like in in my home inspectors where yeah. they're because again uh when i bought a home uh my home inspector said to me do you want me to show you where the water shutoff switch is which, and, which is important. And I said, what's that? Yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing Yeah. Uh, in every home. So uh, definitely learn yeah. something new. Now, I love the home inspectors that take their time to teach you how to actually use the home. And yeah, like that's important. If you're doing some major plumbing changes, turn that off. Or if you're, you know, yeah, you need to know how the house works. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, I mean, everything that guy showed me, I, I, I always like whenever I have an issue now, I always know where stuff is. Nice. I can always do that. And then I call my handyman, Bill. I'm like, yeah. Bill, <laughs> I turned the water off. It's safe to come over. Maybe you can fix this. It's good to have a handyman in your pocket. Yeah. Have a bill. You need a <laughs> bill in your life. You need a guy who could do a little bit of everything pretty well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. He just put a pool into his house. Very nice. Yeah. It, this isn't firefighter bill, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the most amazing guy in the world. And then sometimes he'll fix my lawnmower too. That's he's awesome. uh, a truly amazing person. Very cool. Um, our, our final topic for today, I thought this was super interesting. Um, online users make, they form their opinion of things according to the latest data in two tenths of a second. I don't even know what like two tenths of a second is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a point two. Yeah. That's, that's insane. Um, and so the big thing that we're talking about in real estate right now is how do you get people's attention? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's being suggested that they're saying this, the new style of um, listings is going to be you got to tap into, and we've talked about this in our in our own meetings here, and I'm going to yeah. share some of this because I think it's super important. You have to tap into people's emotional response, right? If somebody sees a house that they love and they really want to buy it, you need to sell them on why it's their forever home. Yeah. You know, thoughts of, you know, your, your daughter walking down the stairs uh, in her prom gown or in her wedding dress, yeah. you know, and she's three when you're buying the house. Like, those are the sorts of things that you want to put in somebody's head. And that's how you feel the emotional connection to the house. Absolutely. That's super important to me. I, I and as my broker, you're probably not going to love this, but there are times where I've, I've had families in homes and one loves it and one is like, yeah, I mean, I guess I can get used to this. <laughs> But sometimes it happens. Sometimes I it happens. cannot in good faith. I always tell them this. I don't think this is the place for you. Well, sometimes some buyers have personalities where they have to sleep on it. Again, yeah. not in this market, but where it, it takes time to digest. They have to feel it. And then they fall in love with it. So I don't know. My whole thing is I would say to them, I take them into the living room. Is this where Christmas is going to be? Can you see oh. Christmas here? And if they see Christmas there, it works. We're good. And if they're like, yeah, I they're don't hoping they they I don't Christmas. know, right? <laughs> Everybody, here's what I also learned: it doesn't matter anything about it. people like Christmas. Yeah, it's because it's not even. I mean, obviously, there's a religious element to Christmas, sure. but there's also the Santa Claus element to Christmas. Everybody loves Santa. <laughs> 
It's not to love. It's not to love about that guy. Uh, here's the other thing, and we could talk about that listing that you just showed me yeah. because it's insane. The write-up is, um, yes. it goes a little beyond what you would normally expect. This house has three bedrooms. You could turn this other room into the fourth bedroom. Okay, so it's funny that you just mentioned Santa. So I'm going to read like one tiny little paragraph. There was um, a house listed. I forget what state this was in. And the seller did the most incredible write-up on here. Um, actually, I'll read two quick paragraphs. And I'm like, I totally want this person to ghostwrite for me. <laughs> but we have to be careful because there's a lot of fair housing violations in here. So anyway, all offers will be considered and all visitors will be given a free roll of toilet paper. Unless there's another shortage, in which case there's a <laughs> lot of leaves outside yeah. because hashtag trees. Also... Please note, if you would like to see this property in the latter part of November or any part of December, the interior looks like, as my son puts it, Santa and a snowman had a baby and threw up everywhere. Like, it's just so funny. Like, the, the yeah. whole thing, like, that they wrote, like, it goes on and on. And I think I was, like, crying, like, laughter tears reading this whole thing. It was awesome. I think to stand out, I think that's the way to go. And yeah. again, to sort of tell a story about the home and about the experience is better than just telling you that there's three bedrooms and a bath and a walk-in closet and a his and her sink. I can see all that. Yeah. Uh, what's what's my emotional connection to that, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, just inserting your your sense of humor into the right. Oh my yeah. goodness, right? I, you know, I, I find too, I'm sure you get this a lot, right? Your seller, your buyers are like, I want to write a letter to the seller and you're like, Yep. Maybe not. Depends on what the letter says. Depends on what the letter says. Although now, as you know, NAR is advising that we don't use them. Yes. We still see some slip through, but yeah. It seems like a good idea until they give you the letter and you're like, yeah, I can't send it. <laughs> until honest. somebody comes after your license because yes. you've delivered a letter. Yes. I can't. I'm not a mailman. And I want to <laughs> keep my license. I'm just going to hang on to this for now. Um, Here's the big thing, though, when it comes to storytelling, and uh, I, we, I taught the class here uh, in our office because it's again. important. One of the things that absolutely kills people when they're telling a story, and this is super important, but details. Yeah. I don't need the whole backstory for you to tell me the story. If the story's good and I really enjoyed it, I'm going to start asking questions, and you can give me those details that you left out. For instance, you had started to tell a story about you and a friend of yours. And before you even got the story going, you started giving me backstory on the friend. I did. And I said, I don't care. Tell me the story first. Now, when the story ends, I'm going to be like, all right, your friend sounds insane. That's where you tell me that part you <laughs> wanted to start, right? Yeah. This is how yeah. insane she is. Yeah. So, again, leave the details out. If you tell the story right and you stay to the main the main part of it, it's going to be so good when it's over, all the people around you are going to start asking all the questions. Yeah. So now you own the floor, too. Yeah. And it's a Q&A time. Again, you get to deliver all of those details. Yeah. You're so good at it, Joe. I think when, so he taught us a class, a storytelling class, and he told a story and we were all hooked. And I'm like, oh, I want to try. So again, I tried to like take into consideration everything you had just taught us. But within two seconds, he shifted my whole story, packaged it up. And I'm like, oh, I like your story better than mine. And it was the same story. It was her story. It yeah. was the same story. Again, you know, yeah. my, my wife's got great stories and my wife's a really good writer. But when my wife is telling a story, there's a lot of that like, so me and my friend, well, uh, so I met my friend two years earlier. And so I don't care about, <laughs> tell, well, we'll find out at a, the end. So is that partially a female thing, too? I it, it, I don't want to be sexist, but I think there's something to that, that need to sort of explain everything so everybody's, it's all out on the table. Yeah. You got to understand, you got to know Sanam to really get this story. And it's like, <laughs> do I know or could you just tell the story you know. <laughs> and then I'll ask about her afterwards. So tell me more about your crazy friend, Sanam. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So spare the details, because believe me, if the story's good, people are going to want to yeah. they're going to want all, all the follow ups. And like with all these write ups too. what like a year ago, the lifestyle videos for home started coming out, too, where it wasn't just a home video tour. It was a party in the house or 
opening up gifts on Christmas morning in the house. And those started trending, but I think they're so expensive to produce. We're not seeing them as much anymore. Um, but those lifestyle videos are very cool. Well, if anybody's looking for a lifestyle video, <laughs> Clovercrest Media does them and they do them cheap. Affordable. Affordable. Yeah. <laughs> cheap sounds cheap sounds trashy. You don't want cheap. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean that's important getting back to your whole how quickly people are like assessing a situation. So oh, can I do a quick PSA? Of course. So last week I got a phone call from one of my clients. I don't know, like, and I have to check with some of our lender partners. As soon as you apply for a mortgage, does all your information get sold like across the world? That's the sense I get. Well, yeah, so I didn't really realize that. So my client ends up calling me and she was like, oh, I got this amazing postcard from this other lender. She's like, have you heard of them? I'm like, nope, I haven't heard of them. She's like, oh, okay. She's like, cause I called them. We're not under contract by the way. And she was like, they wanted me to put down $500 to lock in my rate cause rates might be going up. And I'm like, we don't have a house under contract. You can't lock in your rate and you can't give anybody $500. Like, what is that? So I feel like she was maybe trying to get scammed, but can you believe that? And imagine if she didn't have a realtor. Imagine if she didn't have a realtor yes. and she did pay the $500 because I'm sure they made a compelling case. Yes. So. Listen, there are um, in this business and I think any business where money exchanges hands, yeah. especially in a transfer money situation. We just talked last week about people getting built that is $6 million on houses that weren't for sale. Yeah. You need a real estate agent and you need a good closing attorney and you need a lender that you can trust. And generally speaking, the realtors can make all of that happen for you. Yeah. That is the beauty of, of what we do, but you really do. You need someone that's working for you and advocating for you. And you're, you're not going to find uh, anybody better than a realtor yeah. to do it. But this is the first time I've heard that. Like, yeah, I am. But I'm sure it won't be the last. True. That sounds like. Uh, so if anybody calls you asking for your credit card to lock in a rate, say no and run. Yeah. You can't <laughs> lock in a rate unless you're under contract. Yeah. You have to. They have to lock the rate into something. This is correct. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. They get you every time. I'm telling you, you got to watch out, man. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that is going to do it for us. Make sure you visit clovercrestmedia.com backslash closing time podcast for more. You can like us on Facebook uh, where we share lots of fun real estate articles and information about the Connecticut real estate market. Make sure you share, subscribe. You can even tag someone, you know, uh, who spends all their time flipping through Zillow for hours yeah, on stay end. Stay off of Zillow. Yeah. You don't want Zillow. Mm -hmm. Hit me up and I'll tell you where you really want to be at. <laughs> mm, yeah, because there's there's definitely better places. Yeah, uh, Closing Time Podcast is powered by Rocky Hill Accountants, part of the CMG Podcast Network. We have nearly 40 shows on the network. Uh, go to CloverCrestMedia.com to check out all of those. And if you need a tax expert or bookkeeping or business consulting, make sure you hit up Glenn Parchman uh, and his wife Heidi at Rocky Hill Accountants. I've actually used Glenn for all three of those things. Um, he just informed me the tax deadline is May 17th. So don't leave money on the table. Go see this guy because he'll get you a lot of money. Oh, and he can probably help with all the PP. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a, that's hot too right now. Yeah. Also mentioned he's a cryptocurrency expert. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't think it, but he is <laughs> rockyhillaccountants.com. That is their website for Sanam Salati. I'm Joe Aguirre. Thank you so much for checking out the Closing Time podcast powered by Rocky Hill Accountants. And also, don't forget to follow New England Prestige Realty on Facebook and Instagram. And just go check out the website, too. Yeah. Or just give us a call. Yeah. Or, you want to talk or, real estate. That's always happy to chat real estate. Real people, not just weird listings yeah. that you're thumbing through. <laughs> that does it for us for this week. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching or listening. Or both. Rocky Hill Accountants offers a unique, low-pressure approach to professional and personal services, which is why they have an excellent client retention rate and are extremely proud of the high-quality services that their firm provides. The executive team at Rocky Hill Accountants has over 35 years of combined experience in income tax preparation, bookkeeping, accounting, and IT crypto tax. They specialize in individual income tax preparation, as well as trusts, estates, and gift tax returns, 
The tax deadline for individuals is May 17th. If you're one of the 50 million Americans who still hasn't filed, visit RockyHillAccountants.com.